When we first got the S23 Ultra, the one I have in my hand right now, I was unboxing it and I was so excited because this is my sister's phone if you didn't know. She spent like 2,500 on this phone, Canadian currency. It is the S23 Ultra with one terabyte of storage. And she got this plan where if anything happens to it, she gets a brand new phone. So it added up to 2,500 Canadian currency. But regardless, she kindly let me unbox it and let me use it for like a month or two. But when I first opened it up, I was I was so excited to use the zoom because Samsung has up to a hundred times zoom which was insane I was so excited to take pictures of the moon but every time I was zooming in the screen would turn black completely black and I thought that was weird I thought I did something wrong or I messed it up somehow I factory resetted it still kept doing the same thing I also you know updated to the latest software since we did get it about a month after still nothing was happening and I had to go to my sister and like Girl, um, every time you zoom, it turns black. I swear, it isn't my fault. Since we live in Canada, there isn't that much Samsung stores compared to Apple stores, but the nearest Samsung store to where I live is about an hour drive, and we were so lazy to drive, we ended up calling customer service. Honestly, the whole process was so seamless, even though we couldn't go to a store. I was just happy that we were able to get on the call. It was so easy explaining the situation. Like the guy said, he emailed us the printing label right after the call ended, shipped it out the next day. After two days, they emailed us back confirming that they're gonna send us a new phone and the new phone came about three days after the email. So this is the phone that we got and it's been 10 months with this beautiful machine. My sister absolutely loves it. We're gonna get her intake later today too. Let's talk about the design of the phone. So when I did my unboxing, so many of you guys commented how it just straight up looks like a brick. And even my boyfriend said it looks like a brick. But because I come from Apple land, I do appreciate a more squared off design because Apple is very known for the round edges. So it's nice to have a change, but a big thing about this phone that I absolutely love is that even though it has a large screen, it is 6.8 inches, it does not feel as heavy as it looks. And because the sides are rounded off, it's really comfortable to hold in your hand for a long period of time. A big thing of mine is I hold my phone on the pinky a lot of the times and with pro maxes or larger phones in the past my hands would cramp up over time my pinky would feel sore and have a very sharp indentation but with the s23 ultra because it's made out of lightweight materials it's not heavy at all and i can hold it for a longer period of time honestly i love the samsung designs because it has thin bezels no notch, just a camera, so you get so much screen real estate. So this 6.8 inch goes a long way. Now, going back to the 6.8 display, a lot of people ask me if it's too big, and yes and no. So when I'm holding it in my hands, it is comfortable, but because it is much larger than my hands, sometimes I feel like it may or may not fall out, so I don't feel as secure to compare to my other phone, my 12 Pro, which is 6.1 inch. I can hold this really comfortably, and my whole hand fits the whole phone. The AMOLED 2X display is honestly so beautiful it has up to 3000 pixels what's really cool about it is you can change from hd full hd to qhd and it looks like my sister has it on qhd which explains why gaming on this is so beautiful honestly the only game i really play is genshin impact i literally love the animations it is so beautiful on this phone. Since the chip is powered for gaming, you get a really great experience playing Genshin Impact, a very high graphics game. Since it is optimized for gaming and you know the processor is gonna be amazing, fluid, playing games, going through apps, having a lot of apps in the background, recording, it is not gonna heat up on you at all unless you're going over like an hour of playing games, but that just goes to show you how amazing this phone is. I know there's a lot of posts out there on Reddit, YouTube that debunked the whole moon thing and that it was AI taking a picture. We've all seen that video. I'm still gonna brag about my moon pictures. I still love them, honestly. Yes, maybe it's AI, but it's cool to have a 100 times zoom. Cause we're traveling when you don't wanna walk all the way far to take a nice picture. You can just simply zoom in. And is AI using that? No, it's the Samsung technology and chip doing all that work. 
Regardless of the whole moon controversy, I literally appreciate the 100 times Zoom because when we were in LA, we traveled to Malibu, Vegas, took so many pictures. Zoom was of course used when taking these pictures and they turned out immaculate and up to 200 megapixels. So primarily we were using 50 megapixels, but oftentimes I'll use 200 when I'm taking pictures on my sister's phone. And the colors guys, Samsung kills it with saturation. Always so saturated. When it comes to editing, I love having more data because you can always tone it down, but when there's no data, it's hard to bring it up because you have nothing to work with. But with the oversaturation, the color turns out beautiful. The sky is so blue, my outfit pops. The colors in the background is so beautiful. And with some editing and a little bit of a fade over top, it gives such an old filmy type of look. And you can always dial down the saturation. A lot of the apps are made for iPhone iOS, not so much Samsung. So when you upload a photo onto these apps, it doesn't look as good as in, uh, in the camera or in the photos. It looks a little bit more blurry, a little bit more jiggity, because these apps are more built for iOS than Android. Now, if you're making videos like YouTube videos and uploading it to YouTube, Turns out beautiful, absolutely love the quality. So to get around the whole blurry thing, if you are taking photos in app or videos in app, it's gonna turn off a little wonky, it gives that Samsung look. And Snapchat, unfortunately Snapchat gives it as well. However, to get around the whole blurry thing, it's better to take photos in the camera app and edit it in the app and then upload it to Instagram, TikTok, and um, Facebook. That's how I found to get around the whole Samsung thing. And you'll see photos I posted on Instagram and you wouldn't even know it's Samsung because I uploaded it after editing it and then uploaded it up to Instagram. Now, talking about video, yes, it is cool that it can film up to 8K. Are you gonna use it? Most likely not because when you're filming in 8K, it crops it a little bit as well and it takes up so much space. Guys, read, be ready to have it eat up your storage. So majority of the times when I'm filming on this or my sister, she's filming in 4K, 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. And the videos are so sharp. I really like the videos on the Samsung better than the iPhone because the iPhone has more of a, you know, faded look, but ProRes is beautiful on iPhone. However, 4K video on this is absolutely beautiful. It is so stable because a lot of times my sister is moving the phone everywhere. She's not like a slow and steady. She's like, look at this, look at this, look at this. Like she'll move it around like crazy as you can see in the footage that I'm showing you. And the footage is very, very stable. She usually films in 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. And a lot of times she has it on a gimbal, but even then, like looking at her movements, the footage is not shaky at all. A lot of times she'll use her hand as well, but she switches from a gimbal to her hand and it still comes out really smooth. So we are gonna go get bubble tea with my sister and also I'm gonna be asking her some questions about her phone and get her perspective as well. It's literally a storm. Ooh, Holy. A storm. I hear the hail and everything. Oof. Holy, did you slip? <laughs> oh almost slipped. Holy. Almost slipped. First, the first time around, almost. Like, that's good. If you slipped with your camera or that, oh my gosh, you feel so bad. <laughs> Do you like the quality of the front camera or no? Because I personally like the back camera a lot, but what do you find? Like, I was like, sometimes um, I go back to my iPhone front camera because I'm like trying to get the lighting on this one sometimes, even though it's just the same overall. For the front camera, it's 12 megapixels, which isn't so bad, but I like the front camera of the iPhone, but I really like the back camera of the Samsung because like you said, sometimes the front is really saturated and that's what Samsung's known for. And I'm looking at my camera for my Canon EOS M50. I feel like that's more true to color. So my next question <laughs> is, do you use the S Pen a lot or no? Hmm. Honestly, sometimes I forget that it's there. Um, so I'm gonna say no. It's a big fat no, girl. 
When I was using your phone, I used the S Pen a lot for editing. So I think if you were like an editor, then you would use it a lot more because it is so handy with your huge ass screen. It's 6.8 inches. The S Pen is so nice because when it comes to editing, there's so many little tools, like so many finicky things that you have to use your finger for, which isn't as detailed as the S Pen. I saw the phone and it doesn't look like you babied it. There's a lot of damages. But with that being said, do you notice a performance difference like playing games, using apps? Did it slow down at all for you? Yeah, so I was like, you know, like what for an extra, you know, a couple hundred dollars plus the care package um, for twenty five hundred might as well. So like she said, I did not baby this phone at first. I did because, you know, when you get a new thing, you're like, oh, ooh, ooh, it's yeah. new. But after a while, I'm like, mm, I like using my phone without a case. I know. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, there's, I definitely dropped it a bunch of times. In terms of quality, like the process, is it slow at all? Did everything the same. I love it. So I plan to like obviously turn this phone in, um, to get a, you know, smack dab and new one. So everything's the same, honestly, with, you know, a, a, with some characteristic marks on uh, my phone. <laughs> Perks of when Frank comes home. I get a video of the This is so good. Like the camera, I'm I'm literally. It's so good. It's so good. Thank you. 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 Thank from here? Mm -hmm. And you've never had the gra green tea grass jelly, right? It's no. like light. I'm gonna do a taste test. Let's, let's hope <laughs> it doesn't smell everywhere. Oh, that was easy. Oh, I missed this. It's so good. Did you get a green tea jelly yet? I have not. In terms of battery, the battery in this is huge. It's 5,000 million per hour. On the um, website, it says you can have up to 25 hours with internet and LTE and up to 26 hours um, of video playback. What's your take on the battery? Like, how often do you need to charge it? Can you get a full day? Like, yeah. Yeah, so I realized because honestly, my data was actually on my iPhone, so I wasn't really, really oh, using data on this phone. But I was using this phone all day like literally all day um videoing and just connecting well, and to wi-fi um and i just still had some battery at the end of the day like probably 20 percent left over um so i was very impressed with the battery not gonna lie um how about on like a usual day when you're back at home i honestly by the end of the day i i have so much battery left i don't even need to charge it overnight um it's I'm impressed is all I gotta say. I'm impressed. My last question is there is there anything you want to add for this like for people who switch from iPhone to Samsung? I know we covered it in the last video so you don't have to say it all again. Ever since the last video, um, I mean the last video the phone was still kind of new to me yeah. but now I've been using it for 10 months and something that kind of bothers me about the Android and maybe it's just a me problem. Whenever I want to download an app I have to go to a store. I use Google store a lot but like on the Apple is just like you press an app. So I'm like trying to like download apps and I go app. I'm like, oh my God, I forgot it. It's store. So that's kind of annoying. Um, there's two apps you can download apps from, which is yeah. like the Google or the Android. I'm like, I, don't, I really don't know what one's better. I honestly don't care. I've been using the Google store a lot more. Um, so that's... You just wish it was all in one. I, I like wish Apple. Exactly. Yeah, you wish it was all in one like Apple because you're right. That's a UI thing with Apple. Like everything is so easy. You don't have to think about it. It's all in one. And with Samsung, yes, you get a lot of features, but sometimes it can be very overwhelming. Exactly. Um, I, Whenever I go back to the iPhone, I'm like, I'm kind of bored of this. Like I just like how Android keeps it interesting. So that's something I really, really appreciate and enjoy. It never gets boring. I never get bored, girl. If you had to choose one, iPhone or Android, which one would you go with? Like literally just one. I would drop the iPhone in a heartbeat.
Y'all, look at that snow. It is so pretty to look at, but not pretty to be in at all. I was walking in straight slush, but we are home now and let's get back to the review. Okay, so let's do a benchmark test on the phone to see what it's at, the GPU, CPU, if it deteriorated a little bit or it's the same. So pause, I'm gonna do that right now on the phone. Guys, the score is out for a single core score of 1,610 and multi-core score of 4,501. That is insane. It is still operating at such a high level after almost a year of using it. And honestly, it just goes to show how well equipped the Snapdragon 888 is. I hope you enjoyed this video. If I didn't answer any questions, leave it in the comment section. I will gladly reply to it or even make a full video like YouTube Shorts replying to it. I think that's like a new feature now. So hopefully that's a better way to respond to your comments. However, I wanna say I hope you guys had an amazing new year so far. It's been about a month. And so far things are going good. I'm gonna put it out there. 100,000 subscribers for 2024. Let's get there from 10,000 in a year. I don't know if I can do it that's ambitious but you know my heart is in there I'm gonna pump out content more Samsung content to come I know you guys have been asking for more Samsung like I put up two iPhone I put up two Apple videos and the first comment was more Samsung videos so I heard you it's coming and so yeah if you like this video definitely sub that like button for me I would totally appreciate it and subscribe for more tech and lifestyle content however that is it from me and I'll see y'all in the next one peace